hidden from mortal view within the mounds, the she messenger traversed the ancient route, passing beneath torches of smokeless fire set into silver sconces of intricate workmanship. She spared no pause to marvel as tunnels opened into great caverns, sparkling with rose quartz and citrus-coloured sapphire. Filled with purpose, she raced on through the labyrinth of sparkling stone that led deep into the mountains within the realms of the underworld, into the time that is not a time. At last the path began to rise. She felt the familiar breeze on her face that lifted her spirit, despite the dreadful news that she carried. Soon enough, she passed through the inner portal between the worlds that led to the place beyond. The pupils of her eyes quickly adjusted to the sunlight that poured into a central meadow. Vast and green on this day that was not a day, it was alive with all the varieties of wild flowers that could be imagined. The messenger was swift of foot and dedicated to her task, yet even in her haste she could not help but admire the beauty laid out before her. Coming as she was from the mortal world, the scene was dazzling as she beheld the home of the Tour de Danan, a city of loveliness, warmth and welcome. A great tree towered over the centre of the plain, its spreading branches littered with birds trilling their music to the blue sky. Fountains sparkled with crystal clear waters from which salmon leapt and splashed. Hazel trees twelve feet tall boasted of their ripeness with clusters of flowers. Apple trees crammed and heavy with blossom, dripped a carpet of petals from every bough. Golden apples hung in clusters from a silver-branched tree. The air was sweet with the perfume of orchids and roses. Pretty cottages were dotted about the edges of the plain. Some were built of warm Connemara stone, fitted together with great skill and accuracy, so that no joint or mortar was evident. The doorposts were of carved yew, ornamented with gold or bronze. Other homes were fashioned from hardwood, their lintels edged with silver and adorned with precious gems. Roofs throughout the community were of feathered thatch, some brightly coloured and others laced with white bird's wings. Her way led through paths of glittering stone, edged with the greenest grass. A multitude of people sauntered in sunshine. Some were red-haired, some blonde and others black. All had similarly slanted eyes of brilliant green or sparkling blue. Some were dressed in purple and gold, silver and blue, yellow and white with flowers woven through their hair or glittering metal decorations to hold back their long tresses. Couples danced to the music of flute and harp. Others toasted each other with goblets of amethyst filled with red wine. Racing games were underway, contestants vying against each other for favours. Some gathered on a hillside with bows of yew and hickory, their arrows flying straight and true to the target, onlookers clapping their approval. Still others gathered about a riddle maker, bantering back and forth to guess the meaning of the puzzle on offer. Blacksmiths worked their anvils on fires of charcoal, their bellows blowing to bend and blend silver and other precious metals. Swords of fine workmanship hung from the eaves of the smith's domain, along with exquisite breastplates and accessories. High-stepping horses pranced and galloped freely across the great plain, their manes flying and tails held high. Everywhere there was laughter and joyful merriment that on another day would make the messenger slow her haste in favour of less urgent pursuits. Yet this was not that day. And as the messenger passed through the merrymakers, her presence was seen and acknowledged. They began to nudge each other and to follow. Soon there were great numbers of the folk trailing her course to the great throne. Her chest heaved from the exertion of her journey. She waited for permission to speak. <laughs> 